Hello, how's it going? I'm here with Frida Kahlo to talk to you about fish oils, one of the most overwhelming supplements. So you've heard of the benefits of fish oil for mood, for cognitive function, for lowering inflammation, but when you're looking at the shelves of fish oil supplements in the health food store, you might be questioning if you are buying the right one or what to look for in a fish oil. I was at Costco the other day and they sell about four to five different kinds of fish oil titled omega-3s, salmon oil, krill oil, so how do you know which one to pick and which one is right for you and your health goals? So first, it's important to know the difference between an, a fish oil and an omega-3 fatty acid. Fish oil is where the omegas come from, and omega-3s are the actual fats we're trying to get from the fish oil. And the omega-3s in fish oil can be broken down into two main types, EPA and DHA. So DHA is important for cell membranes, for our brain cells and the structure of our brains. And it's important for pregnancy and breastfeeding uh, where women need to aim for 200 to 400 milligrams per day. And EPA is the anti-inflammatory omega-3. So this is the one that supports mood, supports cognitive function and lowers inflammation. And this is the one that we wanna make sure we're getting enough of if we're feeling foggy, depressed or feel our mental health is dipping. So what should you look for when you're buying a fish oil? So personally, uh, when I'm recommending fish oil to patients, I look for a fish oil that's gonna deliver at least a gram of EPA per day, but preferably two grams or higher, kind of the higher the better in this case. And that helps narrow things down because if you look at the labels of some fish oils, it can be super confusing. Some say a thousand milligrams fish oil per capsule. And you look at the capsules and you see that about three capsules only contains about 100 milligrams of EPA, which is actually a tenth of what you need. So if you're getting one to two grams of EPA in like two to three capsules or one to three teaspoons of oil, you're golden. Second, the EPA should be higher than the DHA. So some studies suggest that for depression, you need a two to one or three to one ratio of EPA to DHA. But I found clinically that you just need to make sure you're getting enough EPA and that the EPA content is higher than the DHA content. There was a study that showed that if EPA was higher than, um, or DHA was higher than EPA, the mood outcomes were worse than placebo. But I don't think that means that DHA worsens mood. It may have just been a weirdness in the study that was done. But we want to make sure that the EPA is higher than DHA. Thirdly, the omega-3s are really volatile. So there was a study showing a negative impact of omega-3s on prostate and cardiovascular health. And it's probably because they go rancid at high temperatures like the temperature of our body, which is 36 degrees Celsius, which has the potential to denature and heat the omega-3s and actually cause inflammation. So to mitigate this, you wanna make sure that the capsules contain some vitamin E, which are sometimes called mixed tocopherols, or another antioxidant to protect them. You can also take your omega with a mixed tocopherol form of vitamin E. Um, and fourth, I always consider the environment. So fish oils are standardized for mercury contents. So there's actually less risk that you'll accumulate mercury from taking fish oils than consuming fatty fish. Uh, but the types of fish that we derive fish oil from have the potential to impact our world. And so therefore I suggest looking for omega-3s that come from bottom feeders like sardines and anchovies rather than farm salmon or krill. Um, you can also consider getting omega-3 plus D together, which I recommend to my patients uh, just to pare down their supplement list because um, and if you're doing that, just calculate the D that you'll be getting per serve because you want to aim for about three to 5,000 IUs of vitamin D, just depending on your blood levels. So which fish oils do I recommend? So there's some great brands like Nordic Naturals or Nutri-C or NFH, but there's this brand from Costco that you can find. So of, of the five uh, brands that Costco sells, there actually was this one that I found that I actually recommend to some patients if you just want a really inexpensive fish oil. So it's called um, uh, Heart and Mind Triple, it's got all kinds of labels, Omega-3, 900 milligram, it's by Weber's Natural. Um, and so let's review and see why this is a good fish oil. Let's recap what we learned today. So you look at the soft gel and each soft gel contains, and of course they're horse capsules, so if you prefer a liquid, that's also fine. But each soft gel contains uh, fish oil concentrate, so total fish oil of 1,425 milligrams a capsule. So if you didn't know what that meant, you'd be like, oh wow, that seems really high, uh, a thousand, over a thousand milligrams of fish oil per capsule. Which is okay, because we're talking capsules here and we know we need to take more than one a day. 
and um, it's from anchovy, sardine, and or mackerel. So these are three of the fatty fish and it's probably more anchovy and sardine than mackerel. Um, the total omega-3 fatty acids is 900 milligrams. And again, we could be impressed by that number, but we also want to know how that's broken down into EPA and DHA. And we can look and then it tells us further that there's 600 milligrams of EPA per capsule and 300 milligrams of DHA per capsule. So good, we've got a two to one ratio of EPA to DHA. And if we want to get a gram of EPA a day, we just need to take two capsules. Actually, I take about three to four a day because I'm trying to aim for the higher, um, the higher end of the range. Um, then we look further. So, okay, so they're gelatin capsules. So if you are a vegetarian, uh, I mean, if you're a vegetarian or vegan, you're probably not going to go for a fish-based oil, but they are gelatin capsules. So this is just furthering us into omnivore territory. If you're interested in a vegan or plant-based uh, fish oil, there's a lot of challenges in finding a good one, but we can maybe do that in a future video. And if you look at the other ingredients, it contains natural vitamin E. So this is helpful because it's supporting the, the, um, the stability of the omega-3s when they enter the bloodstream and it's providing an antioxidant buffer so that these fish oils don't become rancid and contribute to inflammation. So all in all, pretty good. There's no flavor. Sometimes there's an issue with burp up. That's one of the main concerns with taking omega-3 and burp up is Essentially, you take the capsules and then you leave your house to go to work the next morning and, or that morning and you all of a sudden feel like you've just entered a fishmonger or fish market inside your body. So you're getting this fishy burp. So to get rid of that, a lot of companies put some flavoring in the capsules. So instead of having a fishy burp, you have a minty or lemony burp, which is kind of fun. Or there's flavored liquids. Um, but one of the things you can do is uh, number one, take your fish oil before bed so that when the fishy burp happens, you're unconscious. <laughs> and number two, you can put your fish oil capsules in the freezer just to slow the, the release of the uh, capsule breaking open and the absorption of the fish oil so that you're not getting so much of the burp up. Um, it could also be a sign of digestive imbalances if you're getting a lot of uh, backward momentum in the digestive tract and tasting your fish oil too much. This one doesn't have a vitamin D, so I take that separately, but I, I often do recommend combining your omega-3 and D in one capsule. They pair nicely together, and it just, it, again, it just uh, lowers the amount of things that you need to take to maintain your health. So hopefully that answers all of your fish oil questions. Shoot me some messages or, um, or ask me any more questions you might have. Take care.